BTC Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 6, Part 3. The third part for the assembly is going to be the swivel. This has a little bit more complicated section that we're going to use to revolve. There are a number of items that you want to take care of in the very beginning, including the material, and actually you're going to set some things that you haven't done before. Um, look into the model information. We're going to start with the actual modeling of it. So new part, swivel. I'm just going to give it a quick name here. And I want to go into my view tab and make sure I turn on my datum tag so that I can see everything. And we're going to go and we're going to activate the same config program. And it's the one we've been saving. All right. So we're going to sketch on the same datum plane as we have been for our revolved features. So I'm going to pre-select. It's the first feature. So this is going to be a revolve. Not, it's going to be, not going to be a cut. So pre-selecting works well. Revolve. I'm going to click on the sketch view. I mean, you can see my Z axis here. Right mouse button. Axis of revolution. Two positions. Middle mouse button. Now, hold down your shift key. I'm going to move this down here like so. And I'm going to sketch on this side here of the center line, the axis of revolution. All the entities must be on one side. Now, I'm going to show you, if you have a very complicated section, you can do it in pieces. And uh, this one isn't that complicated, but let's say, um, let's say a portion of it you want to, you want to do a little at a time. So if you have a very complicated section, whatever it is, so let's say it's, I know this is very simple right here, but let's say you wanted to stop here. You say, okay, I want this portion to be saved. Well, you can click, check to see if it works. I'm going to control D to look at it. And we'll go into the um, shaded with edges and then check and then this is not really what we want yet but you could save it here you can go control save control s and save it now what you do is you go back into the with it selected you go back right mouse button edit definition right mouse button edit the internal sketch and go back into the section itself now there's a few items in here that aren't going to be any good for instance this line here and this line here and you can delete those and then you continue on with your section. If we look at our section here, we will see that we've got a number of steps and a curve. Now, the reason for doing this is if you have a very complicated section, you can do it in pieces. And then if something happens and you run into problems, you've still got the first portion of it saved. So you can quit this particular portion of the sketching and go back to the original and then start again. But you don't lose everything that way. Don't think you have to gain everything at one time. The other thing is that hopefully you notice here is that I'm sketching kind of ugly. This doesn't look at all like the real sketch of the, in the final sketch. Uh, use my, uh, let's see, go up and put a center arc, center ends. And I'm going to make sure that I close this up. And it's a shaded section, therefore it's correct. And you can see the one on the right-hand side here, this does not look at all like the section that we just did. But it's got the same general shape. Now, you can pull things around to make them look a little bit different and whatever, but it really wouldn't spend too much time doing that. Ah, I'm glad I did this one, though. You can see, for some reason, the center line, the axis of revolution, did not lock into... The reference line here so we've done this before if that ever happens just click on coincident and basically you're saying i want this axis of revolution on the reference 
Now, the other thing is we have to pay attention to our dimensioning scheme. We don't care about the sizes. So, for instance, uh, what dimensions are good? I didn't say dimension values. I said dimensions. So this dimension, this dimension, this dimension is good. Most of these other ones, this is not any good. I'll put it over here. This is not any good. We don't need it. And this one here is a good dimension. This is a radius. We don't have radiuses when we have uh, um, very many, very few objects in design are radiuses, except for rounds. Most everything's called out as a diameter. So right mouse button dimension, quickly double click with your left mouse button, then middle mouse button, and it will put a diameter dimension on there. Deselect with your left mouse button. So we've got one, two, three, four, five that we want to make strong because these are dimensions that we want to use. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we'll go in and we'll add the dimension that we want from here to the center. And we want one from the bottom again to this ledge, like so. So these are the dimensions that are needed for the design purposes. I'm just going to clean up my sketch a little bit. You really don't have to do this, but I tend to do it. And again, the sizes are completely wrong. But the dimensioning scheme is correct, and the shape of the object is correct. So if I look here, I have my longest dimension is 6 inches. So I'm going to go and window in everything. Right mouse button, modify. Expand this out. And lock my scale and make this six inches. Okay. Now everything else is fairly close. I don't know why this came in 601. It should be six. Now, one other thing we do is if this dimension is always going to be six, we can actually go and we can lock that dimension. Now, everything else we're doing is just cosmetically, not cosmetically, we're just changing the values, I should say. So, the shaft itself is a half an inch. We could start with that one. But then we also have this distance up in here, which is 0.375. So, you want to kind of pay attention to what you're doing here, which one you're start, starting with when you're making your editing. If you do it in the wrong order, it'll look a little strange until you get all the dimensions appropriate. This one here at the top is 0.4375. This is 5.5. And one on the very bottom is 1.125. Nope, 1.25. All right. So there's my regenerated sketch. All the dimensions on it. And you can see it started off completely different. First of all, we just did a portion of the sketch. Then we went and we completed the sketch, but we made it kind of ugly, you want to say, exaggerated sketch. Then we put in the proper dimensioning scheme, and then we went and change the values. So everybody's original sketch should look different. Everybody's original sketch should have different sizes on it. The ending sketch and the ending dimensions will be the same for everybody. Now it looks like I used a grid when I did it and this time I didn't. I don't like to use grid very often so I turned out I didn't use it. So we'll finish this one off. Right mouse button OK. And rotate it around, take a look at it. Middle mouse button, control D. Now, if we wanted to, we could go and change a few things. We, for instance, maybe we want to work in isometric. And of course, we would like a different color. I know you're waiting for me to actually put a color on that looks decent. And so am I. 
I think I'm just going to uh, click on this one, see what happens. That's kind of mundane, so it's okay. Again, we can go over here and we can see what happens when we try to edit it. It doesn't have any um, transparency selection here. Put a different color shade on it. If we want to change the color, we could. You can even change lighting. You can see the reflection there, the glossiness. All right. So the next feature that we're going to do is the hole. We're going to put a hole through down here. And in the book, you do have to go and set your datums A, B, and C. You have to do that for all of these parts. They're going to be that's going to be required by the time you get to lesson 12 anyway. So follow the steps in the book. In this case here, we're going to um, go to the model tab, click on hole, and let's see which one we used here. So the right datum plane became B, and we're sketching on this datum plane. And we're going to dimension this hole from one end, and we're going to dimension it from the datum plane also. Let's see what happened here. Not getting the preview. You can see the dimensions here. And basically, from the datum plane, it's going to be aligned. And from the other one, which is the uh, back portion here, it's going to be a through hole. And I'm going to go back up to the top here and uh, see what my dimension is. Like a little bit easier to see it here. 0.5325. So our distance here, I think this is 0.5. I'll go back and check that. Nope, too big. And let's check the other dimension here for my distance. No, it is supposed to be five, like so. And if you look at the shape, you want to go through all in both directions, not blind. Like so. Little mouse button to complete it. Now, you got a number of cosmetic things that go on with this. We've got a few rounds. Uh, I don't think there's any chamfers. So, select the feature, then click on the edges. Hold down the control key when you do that. Right mouse button round. I think this is fairly small. I may be wrong about that. Let's try point 0.1. I think that's what it is. And we also have another one in here. Now, if you want to separate these, you could actually use that round, but put in a new set. Right mouse button, add a set. And you could click on this edge right here and change that to a different size. So it's one feature, but it has two sets. Like so. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on a cosmetic feature. And the cosmetic feature we have under engineering group here. 
we have cosmetic threat. Now, if you click in here, it says, what is the thread surface? And this is the thread surface. Now it says the depth. Where do you start this from? So if we click on this flat portion here, And let's say we make it just four inches. I can't remember what it was in the book. That's the cosmetic thread. And that's basically a, a surface, a cylinder surface. And you can see that a lot better if you go over to hidden line. And when you're done with this, well, let's, before we're done, let's see, this is our distance and our properties. We'll see that it puts in the major diameter, the form you have to fill all this information out so a cosmetic thread isn't like a hole where a lot of the stuff is given to you automatically you actually have to go and put that information in so you have a threads per inch which is 13 uh, unc2 Class is two. And major diameter that's given here. You can change that to what it says in the book. Metric, no, external. So basically, these are all the thread characteristics that you want built into the feature. Check and middle mouse button. You'll see it's a magenta colored surface. Put your cursor here, hit your right mouse button, you'll see thread. There's the revolve, right mouse button underneath that's selecting this one. So the cosmetic thread. And you could go and look at the feature information. You see that it's a thread, thread surface. It's actually a feature and it's a informational data point in that sense that it's putting that information on the feature itself. You got dimensions. For instance, here for this is the features. This is the cylindrical surface, and it is a surface. It has no volume. It's a theoretical cosmetic thread. It's like putting makeup on. So we'll close that. Control D. Make sure you save it. And I'm going to go back over to the shading, and I put shading with reflection. And one thing we could do is we could try the Tools tab here and go to the Model Player. And we could back this up to the very beginning, and we can step through each one of the features, and you can actually show the dimensions with the model player. To the end. The other thing in this uh, particular lesson, you do have some information as far as that, how to print at the very bottom. And we're not going to show that because everybody's printer setup is a little bit different. It go through the model player and the cosmetic information. So this concludes lesson six, part three.